we have another uh, lightning talk. This one might be a little bit different um, on the um, Carlo Leash boundary research. Now, this was um, something that was done by an intern that we had. And again, um, Kieran, it was kind of uh, yourself that was um, kind of set this up and, and, and did most of the work in assisting our intern, uh, Kira to do a lot of this work that she that she did in this Carlo Leash County boundary area. So maybe if you, if you could just give a brief introduction to, I, I, I unfortunately Kira can't be here today herself because um, she she's working. But maybe if you could just give us a very quick background and yeah, talk about she it. she has a personal interest in the area, being um, probably from County Carlo, often wondering why the some part of the town suddenly becomes. County Leash. Now there is a physical boundary with the, I believe it's the Barrow River. Um, but uh, she wondered about that for many years, and then she had friends in school who lived out on the other side of it, who lived in uh, County Leash. So I don't want to take away from the presentation, but that was her personal uh, motivation for it. Kira learned how to use from zero. She learned how to map. She spent, um, I would say seven or eight weeks mapping every building and every land use and every street piece of street furniture that she could map just to detail it out and it wasn't mapped we ourselves in uh open street map had mapped carlo um i think brian there uh made a lot of buildings and um and carolyn who's in here put a lot of buildings down in carlo town but of course we all stopped at the line at the county line um, and we didn't map out that further extent. So I suppose I'm not saying it's our bad, but it's just that we didn't map into County Leash at all. So the, the, the research is about this topic, which is that an urban area is sliced in half by a county boundary. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, I'll pick up from here. So I volunteer to kind of present uh, Kira's work. So she was at yeah. the University of Limerick and she was a, an intern for Open Street Map Ireland in 2021. And part of her internship, she created a report for us to look at uh, kind of how Open Street Map could be used uh, in kind of research purposes and also looking specifically at this uh, kind of county boundary and how it impacts the residents uh, of uh, Greg Cullen. So here's a map of uh, Craig Cullen. So you can kind of see the, well, you can see the boundary. It's that uh, dotted line in the middle there. And it kind of cuts out uh, from Carlo from the river, cuts out to the to the west there. And I believe it's uh, a, a church that it kind of goes out to, to encompass. And then the rest of it, it's kind of arbitrarily drawn to, to kind of encompass that church. But the rest of it is just a straight line. And that was, uh, I guess, historically that was fine because that was ex essentially the extent of the Carlo on that side of the river. But over the years, it has grown. So the actual kind of Craig Cullen area is uh, has expanded. And but they're outside of Carlo County Council, and that causes uh, issues for them uh, kind of accessing services. So here we can see kind of how the split is from. Uh, uh, electoral district perspective. So Greg Urban, that's in Carlo. Carlo is obviously in Carlo, and so is Carlo uh, Rural. And then Craig Rural, that's uh, over in Leash. But you can see that a big population uh, of uh, Greg Cullen lives on the Leash side of the boundary. And you can also see this in kind of the, the commuter stats. So uh, commuting in and out of Carlo, uh, Craig Rural is the largest uh, source of, com of uh, people commuting into uh, the city of Carlo. So there's uh, 1,231 as of the, the last uh, stat uh, or the last uh, uh, census of kind of commuters. In. But it also impacts other accessibility. We saw that in, uh, with COVID. So there was lockdowns, local lockdowns, you could say, in Leash. But that's impacting half of the community for Craig Cullen, whereas the other half who aren't Carlo are not impacted by those supposedly local lockdowns. So just having this kind of arbitrarily drawn 
and boundary is impacting kind of people's day-to-day -day lives. And then part of it was also the, the mapping, uh, as uh, Kieran mentioned. So at the top, we can see the how the, the map was uh, in 20, uh, February 2021. And then after uh, Kira had gone through and kind of filled in the missing building and kind of the other uh, other things as well. So you can see kind of the, the resulting map at the, the bottom there. And one of the proposals from this study would have been to extend the boundary to include all of the kind of correct column. So extending the boundary out to the essentially the ring road to encompass uh, uh, the community that is there. Uh, but there's also some uh, suggestions for the OpenStreetMap uh, community on uh, kind of as the result of her research. So. I'll kind of summarize some of these. So, uh, so OpenStreetMap can be a great resource for other communities going through these kind of community disputes. Uh, as uh, uh, Vanessa was saying, that it can be a good way to kind of just visualize the issues, and it's kind of a really good resource for people can add the data that they need on the map to the map, and then kind of argue their case using that. So, I think OpenStreetMap needs to be kind of a part of that. A resource for communities, but it also, I guess, comes into Brian's point of view that uh, there needs to be access to uh, to getting that data out of OpenStreetMap. So that's definitely something we can work on and as a community is the, the tools for getting the data in and out of uh, OpenStreetMap. So next up was uh, so uh, looking at so this is talking specifically about the the county boundaries. So we had completed uh, Carlo on the tasking manager, but not least. So that boundary was uh, kind of impacting uh, uh, the, the, the completedness of the map. So it kind of contributes to inequality of mapping just because we're drawing our tasks based on county boundaries. But we do have to draw it with, uh, uh, on some boundary because we need to split it up. So the, the solution to this is to just complete all of the buildings in Ireland. So that would just uh, cut out all of the inequality. And also, uh, I guess uh, looking at the tasks, the big tasks can take a long time to complete. So if we can kind of split it up into smaller chunks, it can be kind of facilitate uh, uh, kind of more rapid completion. And also kind of adding new kind of resources and kind of tutorials for new contributors to the map. So that's something Anne has done through our YouTube channel. And, uh, but that's something we could definitely work on uh, with the blog that we have, for example, to, to focus on certain mapping uh, efforts and how we can, how those can be contributed to the map. Uh, so, but Big thanks to, to Kira on her work, and not just on this report, but also kind of the, the other work that she was working on during her internship, which is uh, very helpful. So one comment from Kira is that the traditional boundary was the river, and then the boundary was redrawn in 1898. Uh, and the commission at the time felt that, that was enough. And I think that's probably a fair report for the 1898 because uh, the urban area has built up over time. It wasn't uh, that extensive at that time. And there was a boundary review uh, in uh, yeah. the late 1990s. There was, a, there was a boundary review about four years ago. And the, yeah. the principle by which the boundary got drawn there with, as it was in 1898, um, was it was abandoned which was practicality the coherence of the urban area um, and it was far more to do with what did different interests in the in greg cullen want and there's a greg cullen gaa club and the gaa club had felt that their fortunes would be better off in the leash league than in the carlo league so um yeah ignoring the fact that there's examples in the GAA, and I am a GAA person, by the way, of Money Gall, who are in the Tipperary, they're physically in Offaly, but, sorry, they're physically in Tipperary, but compete in Offaly. And then I believe there's one in, maybe someone knows better, in, um, is it Balahadreen or somewhere like that in Mayo? Ross Common does an, does an issue where the clubhouse is in one county, but the, the, the 
club effectively participates in the league of another county. So th those things shouldn't really get into the business of where local government and where local administration lines fall, but they did and they were a motive and the GA club basically got its members to all sign a petition and that was basically it. It, it, it was a, a sort of a slightly myoptic uh, result then. So that's it. Uh, thank you. Any other questions on the report? Uh, just a comment that the boundary shown there for Carlo, the old one, dated back to 1832. And just to give you one sentence from the description of it. Uh, thence up the stream and across the Tullow Road to the point at which the same stream is met by a hedge which runs down there too from opposite the southern end of the plantation attached to the house on the Balting Glass Road which belongs to Mr Hunt, formerly occupied by Mr Butler and now occupied by Mr Curran. So that's the sort of detailed information that's in there for how to draw one of those boundaries. Hopefully that hedge is still there, and we'll have to see if uh, Mr. Butler is still at the house. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so yeah, Donald, with all your vote, um, so your family's vote. So uh, I just want to say uh, thank you very much to Heike for, for going through that. Obviously, huge thanks to Kira for doing the work and, and the additional mapping that she did. And also a special thank you to uh, Kieran for all the assistance that you provided to Kira. Uh, through that project, much appreciated. I think one of the key, or certainly one thing that I thought was very good that came out of that was that the university in Limerick have since contacted us, wondering if we could have more interns next year. Two, I think. So um, obviously this was a great success, uh, both for Kira and for the university as well as ourselves, so much so that they're looking to redouble their efforts next year. So uh, I think that's, uh, you know, clap on the back for us all, especially you, Kieran. Thank you very much.